Hi, this is Robbie from Agro and uh, I'm coming to you from South Africa. Hi, this is Nick in Australia. Hi, this is Cliff in Ireland. We're chatting about the new album, of course, and how we've kept the band alive on a few different continents over the last 27 years. Looking forward. Hello, everyone. Hello, for... hello, people. Hello. How's it going, guys? <laughs> so, Good day. Hello, South Africa. Hello, Australia. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Good Australia. Morning. Good night, uh, South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Yeah, all the, different, all the different time spectrums of the world in, in, in one video call. It's fabulous, man. And good evening, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's six in the morning here. I'm very, very happy to see you uh, all. Hello, hello, Nick. Hello, Robbie. Hello, Cliff. Hello. Thanks for good joining us for tonight. Thanks for, and thanks for having us, man. This is really nice, man. This is really wonderful to be a part of this, man. Thank you very much for arranging it, guys. No worries. It's really cool to connect with uh, three like different continents, like Ireland, Australia, and Africa, and we have all at different times, so it's kind of cool. And we see also that people all of the world joined us with this event, so it's kind of cool we can connect. And this is exactly what we looked forward when we adapted our uh, program. Good morning. Yeah. Good afternoon. Go, Clifford. Yeah, how's it? <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm, you know what, eh? I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm looking at my phone that's in front of me, and I'm looking at my laptop, <laughs> and I'm seeing two totally different things, and I've got a very... Uh, a small uh, mm, a brain of mouse and uh, <laughs> <laughs> together. <laughs> okay, but it's you're a vocalist. If you're allowed to, you're a vocalist. You're allowed to only think of one thing at a time. It's fine. That's okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but anyway, listen, to you guys, eh? Uh, Nick, uh, and Ag and uh, Veronica, Robbie and other Nick and uh, whoever else is watching, I can't see, but uh, I, I think there's a bunch of you and uh, thank you for, for, for joining us. And uh, what's, what's most fabulous, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Agro has been around for a hundred years and um, we always uh, historically threw a big launch party every time we release an album and it was obviously a, a, very, a very big deal. And uh, we would... Uh, always make a, a very big event out of it and uh, obviously with the concert and support <coughs> bands and album sales and merch and everything and this is the first time in, in, in eight albums where we've put out an album and it's like this morning I woke up it's like Ooh, we released an album and it's like what are we doing man what are we doing about it there's no concerts to to, 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 to support it so um, the fact that Nick Hell gave us a call and said, "Let's let's make this the official launch party, man. That's wonderful. Eh? Thanks, uh, thank you very much, bro. Thank you. And you know what? Eh? Nice. Thanks. You, you're the coolest DJ in Dublin, and you're the coolest DJ in Ireland. And to be honest, you play the best music of all the metal bars I've been to around the world. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you, Cliff, uh, for um, the speech. So, before we are going to uh, talk about uh, the feeling of the new album. Can uh, Robbie t uh, tell himself um, what he um, what he does in the band? Hi. Yes. Okay. Um, so yes, Robbie here, and um, I've been playing bass for Agro for a little over 19, 20 years. About I can't even remember. Um, but it's been one heck of a ride, and it's so awesome to finally get this album out. I mean, we've been sitting on it for for a number of years, and it's. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic to be yeah, getting this, this album out there, yeah. Um, other than that, I'm the quiet guy of the band. Ah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you, Nick, what's your role in the band? Mine is uh, just generally drinking and causing havoc. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I was, a, well... I, I was in the band from 2003 till 2010, 
the keyboard player and uh, they uh, and now I guess I'm the keyboard and guitar rhythm guitar player yes that's what I am I do backing vocals as well apparently so uh, yeah boy for everything at that's the moment cool. it's keyboard that's someone, what I do so someone is horning all the time I see <laughs> So, yeah. Nick, yeah. Yep. you are like the newest, uh, well, you are like a little bit shorter than the rest. So, how does the mm -hmm. new and final album feel for you? What's the feeling? Well, you see, that because I wasn't there when the album was written, um, I had to basically start from scratch and get it everything, get everything in my head. What's, what it's supposed to sound like, try and feel the vibe of the other guys without me being there it's, it was very interesting it's um it's a more guitar orientated album than what i was used to when i was in the band like when i was playing live with them so uh, it's a lot less synthesizers and keyboards uh, and i had to adjust my playing on this but it's 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 quite it's quite a powerful album the, the, it's uh it's more hard hitting than what we usually do. It, it, it's interesting. That's that's the way I see it. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's than than what we're used to. Thank you for the description and Cliff and Robbie. So, how was the for you the feeling to have this new and final album? Um, look, it's it's still a bit surreal for me because um, this album. I can't even begin to explain how uh, over the last, if anybody knows the history of agro, it's always been a very uh, set and clear vision. And uh, what happened was, and I'm going to try to be as brief as I can, because this is actually, <clears throat> this can go on for hours um, of, of, of how we got to where we are now. Um, what happened was, and, and as I said, I'll try and, I'll try and put it together as, as quick as I can. Uh, in 2010, we 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 started work on this particular album, um, and then what happened? We had uh, some key members uh, of the band at the time uh, quit for 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 various reasons, and um, that that threw the writing process out. And then what happened is uh, we we recruited new members into the band, and we were able to uh, get everything going again. And then. Uh, 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 John, who we brought in on guitar, uh, he was employed to, to, to write as well. And uh, he, he, he wrote all the music for this album. And, um, and, and then when we started recording it, I think we started recording it around 2013, I think, somewhere around there. And then... And then um, he, he quit the band and his wife was in the band as well playing violin and, and of course she quit too they they moved on to uh they they, they left the band to go and uh, live a more um a country life um mm -hmm. and, uh, and and that was all understood and it was all agreed and it was all uh you know we were all okay about it but it, it left us in a situation where the album was incredibly rushed um uh, we had to try and finish the album with the lineup that we had and the studio we were in the the guy, the producer, he was busy getting ready to immigrate to his role. And um, what happened was we had such a rushed process. I, at that time, I was getting ready to uplift my family and reroute to, to Ireland. So it was, it was such chaos. Plus, we had a, new, uh, a, a, a whole new touring lineup. Um, so, so gigs were... Anyway, it was all over the place. And then what happened was I moved to Ireland and obviously gigging and touring <laughs> came to an end. Um, and the band never, I won't say we ever broke up because you always had the idea of getting back together again and, and reuniting. Mm -hmm. I actually thought that the album wouldn't happen. I thought, you know, you know, guys, you know we gave it a good shot. It's a well-written album. It's a lovely album. Uh, John did a good job writing it. We did a good job recording it. But it all—it was all just a mess, and um, 
what happened then was uh, we shelved it for a while, and then what happened is uh, Nick and I got in contact. Well, we've always been in contact. So we were we were both at the Wacken Open Air Festival in Germany um, all the years ago, and uh, Nick said to me, "Do me a favor, uh, just send me the tracks, and I will see what I can do." Because he had set up a studio, and um, so what happened was we. We sent him the tracks and I didn't expect much, but what Nick had to do is he had to strip the album. He had to strip all the guitars, he had to strip and throw away the violin and he had to rebuild the album and put in all the, the rhythm guitars again um, and then all the keyboards and remix the album and all of a sudden it started making sense again. So yeah, we had something to work with. And um, so look, that was a very long way of answering your question. This is an album that I never believed would see the light of day. And now, sort of 10 years after the inception of, of the original process, to, to, to sit back and, and discuss it with you guys, it's still bizarre to me. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely fabulous to be in this position. In fact, it's so exciting. Uh, Nick and I have been talking, you know, this album is called The Bitter End because of all the pain and all the hell that went into us getting out our last album. And, uh, you know, we just wanted a good send off for, for, for what is nearly a 30 year legacy of the band. And, um, the thing that this has inspired is, um, maybe we should have called it the better end because, um, there's quite possibly going to be, we, we, we probably, we, yeah, we're going to, we're going to continue after this year. Yeah. We're not, we're not, it's not the end. Yeah, it sounds like an understandable like uh, story, and like it's, it seems like troublesome, like the production. But I will give it a listen, and I think like you're telling, it paid off like in the end. Yeah, look, we were we were very happy, you know. Um, obviously, um, li listening to the album now, I listened to it last night for the first time properly in its entirety since it was mixed and mastered and and put together. And I must admit, I'm I'm in incredibly happy there that the job Nick did with his studio was fabulous um, bear in mind what he had to work with I mean a lot of the vocals um, were demo tracks you know they weren't really um, prop well when I say properly recorded they were properly recorded but they weren't they, they were for demo and practicing to go back in and do the proper tracking later on Mm -hmm. And I said to Nick, I, I think I want to redo some of the vocals. And he said, no, bollocks. He says, you know, this, this, every song's got its own charm. You know, stop being hypercritical. And, um, and, and then when I took that into, into consideration and I listened to the album, you know, just stop thinking, oh, I could have done better here. I could have done better there. I should have worked harder on that. No, bullshit. It, it's, it's organic. And that's, that's, I think, was the original plan we, we set out to do. Um, I've gotten to a stage in my, my personal life where I can't stand listening to albums that are overproduced. And um, mm -hmm. so the fact, the fact that this still has a raw edge for me makes me very happy. And um, that's what real heavy metal is all about, not getting lost in too much modern production. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. It's the best, like, if it comes from the heart and, like, from... Uh like putting it forward and not like producing and producing. It's the nail on the head. This, this album, the, the, the raw emotion uh, comes through. And um, Nick, Nick in his studio was able to capture that um, without, uh, without compromising anything. And uh, so, yeah, I'm very happy, man. I'm glad you like it. Yes, cheers, Nick. So, Nick is man. <laughs> So Nick is the man in the band. <laughs> well, I, I kind of had to be, I, I, I was kind of thrust into it. I don't know what I was <laughs> so, But I had to be, and it's turned out right. I, as Pip says, in terms of production, it's, um, it's very easy to go, oh, no, you can do this better, and you can do this better, and like make it so computer-like and I thought no this is not what we are we don't we don't need to do this it, it, there are mistakes there are timing mistakes in it they're very slight that I can hear obviously you probably won't mm -hmm. but I, I think it makes it it makes it more real and I, I, I like it I, oh, I, I, well, I wouldn't put it out if I didn't like it obviously. But, so, so I hope you so behind this album is there any concept Nick Behind the album? Yeah. 
in terms in, in terms of lyrically, yes, I think Cliff can answer that. Okay. Cliff. Sorry, what, what was the question? And can you be more direct, bro? Yes, if there is any concept around oh, the concept. yeah. Um, wow. No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> I, I had that idea in the beginning, uh, um, but no, no, no concept. The, the 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 lyrics were shared between myself and John. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of the a lot of the songs he wrote come from a very personal place, a very um, very emotional place, um, uh, to a, to a level that I've never sung before. Um, there, there are songs that are are very sort of I, I don't know if it's autobiographical of of, of his life um, and his own experiences, but uh, it was very very deep and very um, uh, very personal. Um, which was strange for me, um, but I, I think I got them. I think I got the the the, the emotion across that, that he was looking for with those songs he wrote. The, the majority of the lyrics I wrote, and it's my my normal my normal writing style, um, where um, there's there's not one thing in particular that uh, that that guides me. I think it's just things that I absorb. Out of life and and mm. how I felt it and how I interpret it. Okay. So there are songs that are, are, are very deep and very meaningful. Um, uh, I, I well, I believe so anyway. Uh, but there are songs when I was uh, <laughs> you know digging very deep to find some some um, some 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 lyrical inspiration. Um, I wrote some some really really crazy. I think I, I outdid myself in some of the. The, the the dumbest things I've ever written about and and made a story about it and um, is the song tell us about the birds first Clifford please tell us about the birds <laughs> <first, please. laughs> yeah yeah my 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 craziest song I think I've ever written on this album is a song called a Podogram Podagra Metasona which is I a do. medical term <laughs> a medical term for a disease of 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 the big toe yes um, yes. Uh -huh. I I saw I seen this uh, title and I said what is this? <laughs> now, the, what, what happened was, uh, and it's a true story. I um, I had a terrible, terrible gout attack in my toe, and I, I couldn't walk, and I was dying, man, and it was absolutely insane, and I was screaming and crying and going mad, and and, and I didn't know what to do because I I managed to get home from work that day, and I was rolling around the floor because the doctors were closed and. And, and what have you, and uh, I didn't know what to do, so I, I managed to, 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 to get into my car and try and drive to the nearest bottle store, or um, uh, an off license, as, as we call it here in Ireland, um, and I bought a bottle of whiskey to, to try and kill the pain, mm -hmm. and I managed to get home with this bottle of whiskey without dying, and um, I, I drank whiskey and listened to the scorpions the whole night, trying to deal with what was going on in my toe and um uh it had a negative <laughs> effect because all i did get drunk and the pain got worse in my toe and uh and uh, i got more and more emotional and i remember just crying most of the night getting emotional from the school because we were due to play with the scorpions uh, uh in in germany uh a few months later and uh, so all the emotion of that and and uh, sorry that was at, at a festival not not his direct support or anything. Uh, mm -hmm. So that the pain of my toe, listening to the songs, thinking I was going to die, and um, a, a couple of weeks later, I, I, I put those feelings down, and um, and uh, I actually reference probably twenty songs of the Scorpions in 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 in, in that particular number. And looking, back, it's not a serious song, but it's a it's a really it's a it's, it, it, if if you understand. What gout in the code is like, the love I have for the music of the Scorpions and the effects of a bottle of whiskey. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's how we got that particular song. Yeah. Great combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you to answer your question, inspiration comes from everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool, Clifford. Thank you. Thank you. Usually, I'm... You see, usually in Agro we have the two 
the, the, the two extremes when writing, especially lyrics. Mm -hmm. The one side is the incredibly um, uh, serious and important sort of things. And then we go to the other side where, we, where we're so silly that we don't even know what is going on. Like, it, it, but, but that's the two. We don't go in the middle. We go incredibly serious, uh, like for about serious, serious subjects. And then somebody writing about their bloody toe, you know? It's uh, that's what that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! I'm interested in the song. I will give it a, uh, a. I will listen to it after the interview, and see <laughs> if I know where the inspiration came from. So yeah. So back to a general um, question. Now uh, you have. Uh, how did you overcome the long distance uh, with regard to touring and recording? Uh, well, touring, touring is not happening obviously because we're mm -hmm. we're on three continents. So, uh, whether we're ever going to play live again, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's up in the air. But because of um, uh, the the internet has made everything easier. I mean, we, I, I like like right now. I mean, we we're, we're so far apart, but we're in the same room roughly. It's it's not difficult to it's not difficult to write together. It's uh, we can bounce ideas off just like this, and that is okay. It's a bit it's a bit impersonal, but uh, writing is not a problem from from the other side of the world. It's not difficult. I I usually when I write I usually write by myself. Uh, I I don't go to uh, I, I prefer doing it myself and then just giving giving a whole song to the rest of the guys and then changing a few things so for me it's easy I don't know what the others are like but to me I'm, I'm a bit of a dictator when it comes to stuff like that so. uh, uh, personally personally I believe that we're, we're we're a great family you know and even though we're on three different continents, I think that uh, the family can pull together and we can make something happen. And I think oh, the yeah. will is there, you know, and maybe there's a possibility that one day we can all come together and, and you know, arrange a few more shows. Obviously, we'd like to, you know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd love, I'd, I'd love to play live. But it, it, it is not easy to, to do, especially when you're not a huge band with a lot of resources to, to throw around. And uh, all of us with jobs and stuff like that, so it's it's it's, uh, it's it's not the easiest thing, but it can be done. It really is up to Cliff, to be honest. Like the rest of us are ready <laughs> to invite you twice. <laughs> Never, we were we were looking at putting together shows a couple of years ago. Um, that fell through. It's all about finances, you know. It's um, you know, either we've got to fly. Obviously, Rob lives in South Africa, and uh, our current drummer and lead guitarist still live in South Africa. Rob, I mean, uh, 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 Nick lives in, all the way in Australia. And of course, I'm here in, in, in Ireland. So, you know, where do we put this tour together? You know what I mean? If we're going to go to South Africa, you know, we're going to get a lot of money to go there. And if we're going to do a tour in Europe, we've got to get the, the majority of the band here. And um, all of this costs money. And there's not many promoters uh, willing to put, um, you know, willing to fly you know, uh, a band over or half a band over from the darkest tip of Africa, you know, um, uh, it's, it's, it's logistics and it's money and it's time. However, um, I, I can't see tours happening. Um, it, it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense at this stage, um, but festivals. Yeah. Without a doubt. Well, if, Russ, if, if, Russ if is right, speaking about Wacken 2021. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, 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 do you know Ross, that? No, no. Ross is saying we should all meet up at 2021 in Wacken. So. I know, I know Ross is there. So um, uh, Ross and Van Canter will be performing. They were supposed to perform now, but obviously moving to 21. So Ross, go speak to, uh, go speak to Holger and, uh, and, uh, and Thomas and uh, tell them you, you want us on the bill with you, mate. Yeah. Go, Ross. Make things happen. We're talking about Ross from Van Camp. Ross from Van Camp is the most legendary a cappella metal band. Ever. 
Amazing. Listen, I'm for a peep. Excuse me. D d hang on a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ross is the loveliest, loveliest man in the in the music business. He when when I ask anything of him, he's the, so supportive and everything is he's just like there to, to yeah. help love that man yeah Vanganda is amazing band but uh, oh it's fantastic pity, because pity but uh, it's pity because i never seen them live i don't neither mm. but i uh, I've, 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 yeah i also haven't seen them live I, I'd, I'd love to mm. so <laughs> yes. uh, we, we're talking Ross about <laughs> <laughs> there's too many bands. There's too many bands, uh, uh, Nick, to to see. I, I've, whatever comes to Australia, I've I've already seen probably about ninety five percent of the bands that come to Australia, and I don't even go to gigs anymore. But it's it's so much. You go like, oh my god, I I I don't want bands anymore because my head is exploded. Clip <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. his booze. Hello, Cliff. Welcome back. <laughs> so, Nick, someone wants to know why are you in the car? <laughs> why am I in the car? All right. Yeah, Von so, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> because, all right, so I'm in the car because um, it's six o'clock in the morning here. I have a two-year-old baby that um, does not really like to sleep. We live in a smallish house and I have a very booming voice. <laughs> um, from what you can probably gather. Yes. So I've driven around about I've I've driven about five k's out of like away from my house, sitting in a car. It's also <laughs> cold. Uh, uh, I've I put the I've, I've put the heater on in the car. Uh, I'm far away from home. I can't wake them up. Uh, and I'm having my cup of coffee. That's why I'm I'm in the car. Taking <laughs> one with me. I'm on the team, yes. <laughs> great story, great story. <laughs> so, the new album is out today, and yes. uh, um, I don't know, can you, uh, ah, Robbie, Robbie, you can answer. So, in which form uh, you are going to release this album? Are you going to have CDs, uh, tapes, or uh, vinyls? Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm hoping that we can release some, release some hard copy, like CDs and... Um... I don't know, that's, that's a budget constraint at the moment, but um, we're going to be talking and discussing amongst ourselves. So uh, hopefully we, we definitely want a physical release of some sort. I mean, it just belongs to be. in our collection. There has to be. Um, obviously, it, uh, we, 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 I'm, I'm in discussions with, with the guys that uh, um, put this album out uh, digitally, digitally, and... Um, <laughs> We, we're looking at doing a, a small vinyl and a small CD run, um, but that won't be in the next week or two. We've got to get all this corona madness over where we can all, you know. So um, I'm sure before this year is up, there, there's there's definitely going to be uh, a small vinyl run and a small CD run. Um, how much and the numbers, we haven't a clue yet um, of, 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 of how many, but Tom will tell you. Obviously. Obviously, with the Corona thing, it it has put a lot of spanners in a lot of wheels, and we don't want to. Uh, we we can't. There, there's a lot we can't do. But we wanted to put the music out because we 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 are tired of just sitting on it, and we thought we'd give people some something to listen to while they're sitting at home and have nothing to do, basically. Yeah, and no, we, no, Nick, Nick is very right there because. We were supposed to release this album last year, um, and there was a, a company behind, and we were going to go straight to vinyl, and, and that fell through, and then you drag your heels, and then you shelve it for another idea, and then um, Michael Naranjo and his team approached me and said, let's put the album out on, on their label digitally. I said, okay, I phoned Nick. I said, let's just do this. Let's just get this fucking thing out now. Let's just get it out. Man. Otherwise, we're going to faff and fart around for another year. And, uh, and uh, so... so Let's get the album out. It's there. Agro's alive. Agro's are well. The, the songs are good. The album's good. I believe the album's good. And uh, um, if there's enough demand, and I believe there will be, then obviously we do a CD and a vinyl run. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. I'd, I'd love to have a physical. I'd love to have a physical uh, yes. uh, copy behind us. Well, once once this uh, Corona stuff gets gets done and sort of calms down, we'll 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 do it. I reckon. Yeah, I think people would like to have something physical because this, we can keep it, you know, forever. And uh, why we're here now? So why do you think uh, people are going back to buying uh, vinyl and tapes? The whole, oh, the whole yeah. thing, I think, is, is, is the nostalgia, is the better sound. Look, no. I mean, no. sorry, do you want to speak, Nick? Yeah, yeah. No, no, go for <laughs> sorry, I didn't. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> I'm. Okay. Um, oh, fuck sakes. Who's going? Me or you, bro? <laughs> <laughs> go, Clifford. Go, you go, boy. You go. Go, Nick. All right. <laughs> no, I, in terms of sound, I don't think there's there's no difference anymore. I mean, all of us, the the devices that we listen music on nowadays is not. Uh, the, you listen to music on your phone, on headphones with enhanced bass, and so on, and so on, and so on. So. The the, the 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 quality that you get out of a proper vinyl with a proper turntable and everything is largely lost. Is it, it's more of a I think um, a collectible sort of thing, which is which is fine. CDs, I'm not I'm not that. I don't know anybody that buys CDs anymore. I, I know I haven't probably in the last 10 years. Um, I'm a yeah, fantastic. I, I find wherever I move, I have to move my whole CD collection and, and I stopped moving my CD collection 10, 10 years ago. So <laughs> from, from personal experience, um, yes, it is better to have physical copies because you've got something in your hands and it feels more personal. Yes. Than just having a bunch of files on your phone. I get that. I absolutely do. At the same time, going going around town with a big LP under my shoulder, under my uh, under my arm, I mean it's never gonna happen really, is it? So sort of have both, I guess? Nick you you're not a you're not a metal elitist snob like me then. Mm-hmm. No, no. I, I'm an elitist <laughs> when it comes to the music itself. When it comes to the music itself, but I'm not. A, a, I'll listen to anything, man. When I was growing up as a kid, I, I, trust, trust me. The first metal album I heard, Halloween, uh, the EP, was dubbed from a cassette on a cassette on a cassette on a cassette. I don't even know if. Um, I could actually hear what uh, Kai Hansen was singing at the time. There was no way I could make it out, but it was fun. So the quality of music from from, from then, I, I, I as a, from a, from being a kid listening to shitty tapes, I've I've had to grow up with that stuff. So it doesn't really bother me. I'm not like, oh my god, this has to be so sonically beautiful. It's okay. <laughs> I can hear what they're singing. It's fine. So, Cliff, you wanted to say something? You and me? Yes. Yo. Uh, no, no um, I, I, I'm in two minds because uh, I reluctantly had to leave a very big music collection back home in Africa when I moved to Ireland. And, uh, you know, uh, the boys will back me up in Africa. Despite all its problems, you've got a lot of space and you've got, <laughs> you've got you know, it's a lot easier to look after and store your collection. And uh, I, I simply couldn't afford to bring my collection over here. And uh, if I did, if I got it here, I, did, I wouldn't have the space. I, I simply wouldn't have the space because I, I had a dedicated room to my music collection. So I'm, I'm still of the collector's mindset um, uh, in that... Yes, I absolutely adore streaming services. I, I today, for instance, uh, the new album from a band called Horn, um, 
was a German band called Horn. I don't know if anyone's familiar with them. It came out today and I put on my earphones and I went for a run and man, I enjoyed it. And, and it's, it's just such a wonderful experience. However, however, I don't have that relationship with the band yet. You know what I mean? I'll only have that real relationship when I'm holding the big fat vinyl. Yes. Uh, um, I, I've now... Uh, showed my appreciation as a fan direct to the artist, and I feel connected. Um, so um, I, I'm in a situation now where, as soon as uh, my family is in a in a in a in a, 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 a better position to move into a, a, a bigger place, yeah, I'd like to get my music collection over here and, and fill the gaps that I've missed out on in the last couple of years, and obviously start moving towards other formats like like vinyl and cassettes, man. Um, mm. To be honest, I can't, I've got no more room in my cupboard for more T-shirts, man. You know, I... I, I <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> I, I mean, I can't wear all the shirts I have. I can't. Yeah. I can't. And I don't, I don't, I don't flip through my T-shirts with, with, with love and, and, you know, like I did with my, my, my CDs, you know. So um, I need to be in a situation where I can have a music room again. Sorry, man. This is a long way of saying, yeah, physical is better. I love it. <laughs> yes. No, absolutely. It is better. Cheers. It is better. Cheers. I, I agree. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. I agree. I'll cheers to well. that. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. 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 And you know what's even better than uh, a normal physical release is like I'm absolutely addicted to all the different colored vinyls and shaped vinyls and all that. And it's just so wonderful what's going in. You mentioned cassettes. Uh, it, it's absolutely blown my mind of this whole cassette resurgence. I mean, we all know cassette is inferior, an, an inferior digital recording to analog record. Yeah. Yet there's still this connection that some people have with the cassette, like Nick uh, was saying earlier, mm -hmm. a tape of a tape of a tape. We developed a relationship with that thing, man. And so now here are the contents of your new band in a cassette form and putting it into the thingy and pushing play and, blah, 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 and trying yeah. not to so lacquer, hey? <laughs> so funny, so funny. <laughs> hey? Good stuff, good stuff. Love it. Good stuff. Pretty old enough to, to remember the H track cassettes. I, I no, we're not that old. We're not we're not that old. Not Seriously, that old. sorry. <laughs> uh, you, you, you it's like a cartilage, bro, that you like yeah, shove yeah. into like the console. Yeah. Yeah. But no, we know what they are, but no, we don't see them. Okay, yeah, flapping all teeth. I had like one tape uh, I am twenty, like twenty fourteen. I had one tape and it was Manwar and I know I put it like in the thing, but for me, it's more like CDs that I grew up like. I had like a few tapes, but I don't know what happened with them and then the radio didn't support. So I didn't have like connection with tapes. But I have also tapes, but I have in Greece. So I have few here, I think, but uh, most of them in Greece. Right. Now, now, here's a question for you guys. All right. Nick, I've met you a few times, and I know you're from Greece originally, living in Ireland, right? Yes. yes. Um, Veronica, you, you're not from Greece, are you? Veronica's muted, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm uh, not from Greece. I'm from Lithuania. Lithuania. Hey, all right. That's cool, man. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And, and, and Egg, where are you from? I have like uh, Polish roots, but I'm born and raised in the Netherlands, and I moved like one year in the hope to Dublin. So, so basically, we've got the entire United Nations on one call, man. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can it's say so. Like <laughs> unbelievable. Cliff, when did you when did you move to Ireland? I I, I moved to Ireland in 2015. Oh. Um, Okay. It was a uh, longer than you. No, it was a it it, it was a, a long time coming. I mean, uh, you know, anybody, uh, it's it's not it's not unreasonable to say that South Africa, as much as I love it, is 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 in a mess, and it has been in a mess for 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 mm -hmm. quite a while. However, um, it's just in a more violent mess at the moment, um, and. Uh, 
I, we, we took the, the decision as a family um, to move here uh, because my wife carries an Irish passport. So that was an easy in for us. Um, and after I witnessed my, my, my third murder in front of me, um, we decided to, to take the, the plunge and, uh, and, and, and resettle in a new country. You know, we had to, we had to give up everything we knew, all our family, all our friends, the band, you know, um, same, Nick, Nick did the same thing 10 years or five years before me. Um, I wanted to ask, <laughs> yes. You know, and uh, so so I I came here, uh, uh, you know, t just short of five years ago. We knew nobody. Um, we had no money. We had no jobs, and uh, it was uh, it was really tough. Uh, but the metal community, man, and I'll, I'll say this again. You know, the people we hooked up first was uh, was my dear friend Peter and his wife Jane, um, and they connected us to other friends and other friends and other friends. We went to um, concerts, and we met the likes of yourself, Nick, and we met uh, uh, Veronica, and we met, you know, and before long, you know, through the metal community and the metal community alone, we all of a sudden had fitted in to a country that I didn't even understand what they were saying with their strange accents, you know yes. what I mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but all, all of a sudden, I had a family with... with you know, in, in this strange place. And, uh, and, uh, and now I, I couldn't be happier, man. Yeah. Look, I want more space to bring over my CD and my vinyl collection. You know what I mean? But, uh, just, just to be able to walk to the shop every night with my daughter and my wife is a, is a wonderful privilege that you can't have in Africa. You just can't do those things, man. And, uh, oh. it, it's, it's, it's very, very sad. So, you know, um, I'm I'm living it up here, man. I really am. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful country, and they're treating us wonderfully. And um, yep. Good. So thank you. Slanta. Slanta. <laughs> Walter. <laughs> so um, Cliff, you said you moved from uh, South Africa to uh, Ireland. So. Can you tell us what uh, the difference were and similarities were if you really zoom into the metal scene? Whew, okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, I just don't want to sound derogatory to anybody, but uh, uh, the South African metal scene is very strong. It's very strong in a very confined uh mentality okay mm -hmm. because the guys don't get the international travel traveling bands that we, we were privileged enough in, in in europe to get so the the, for, the local support is very strong it's 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 really good but the the because south africa is such a huge country the local bands can't cut it because you you've got you're either in johannesburg or in cape town and and very few in between, and that is 1,000, about, what, about 1,200 kilometers apart. Yeah. And so it's, 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 it's a really, it's a nice little scene. Um, it's a nice little scene, and, and, and the, guys, the guys that are into it are, are, are really into it. My, my problem with it, and, and this has made me very un, 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 unpopular in, in certain circles, is I've always campaigned for for metal rights uh, in South Africa um, because a lot of the people, and I understand why to make metal work in South Africa you have to metal just has to be another cog within the alternative music scene, you know. Okay. So if you want to have uh, from hundreds to perhaps a couple of thousand at a music festival, mm -hmm. you can't you can't just do metal. You've got to be alternative, you know, and um, so so a lot of the things get watered down for me personally. But that's just from a personal standpoint. There's nothing wrong with other people listening to other genres. Nothing wrong at all. Mm -hmm. I think it's fabulous. However, when I go to a concert, I don't want to sit and watch the fucking Pixies, man. I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not interested. I'm not interested in 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 that kind of music. I'm not interested in um, in 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 a lot of uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to run anybody down. But there's, you know, I want to hear metal, man. And that's the beautiful part about being here, is I can go to a 
metal show uh, where I can just watch metal bands all night. I can go to Brussels uh, and uh, have Nick DJ and I can listen to power metal exclusively the whole night, the whole night, man, you know, and no one has to throw in the doors or fucking uh, Sisters of Mercy or, 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 or alternative. <laughs> Or the pixies. I can't stand the pixies. Oh, I can't. I can't stand the <laughs> I, I hope that makes sense. Um, it's just um, Europe is in a very, very privileged position to be able to to be able to have a big enough community to support not only the genre but uh, subgenres within people, you know, and have a whole thrash evening dedicated to thrash fans. And you'll have a turnout, you know, or a whole death metal, or a whole power metal, or whatever the case may be. It's a, it's a, it's 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 an absolute wonderful privilege to be to be in that. Yeah, I totally understand that it would be like horrifying mixing death metal with pop or uh, I don't know symphonic metal. It would be a weird choice. No, look, I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 okay. I'm okay mixing death with black with with, with symphonic. Uh, I'm I'm okay. I mean, uh, I I mean I can listen to Dark Throne and Striper in the same day and uh, and and be as satisfied. That's me. What I don't want is is is, is pop, and I don't want uh, uh, generic fake metal bands. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't listen to uh, I can't listen to Duma Borga and then Violet Fan straight afterwards. It does not work. It does not no, Don't do it. Don't, no. And, and unfortunately, in South Africa, Cliff said, you have to sort of do that sort of thing. Otherwise, it's not enough people. Good. And Robbie, what do you think about the metal scene in uh, South Africa? Because you are there. Are you going to concerts? Well, you see, the concerts in South Africa was well, like Cliff mentioned. I mean, if you yeah, you have a scene in Johannesburg and you have a scene maybe Pretoria, which is you know is it not too far away, but then Cape Town, you oh, only have you know, a few select you only have a few select venues that you can go to, and it's, and it's the constant, it's the same sort of thing happening all the time. You know, oh, yeah. um, it's it's a small scene, but you know, it's, um, it's we we do love it, so it's it's very tight in that. But like like Cliff said, this is very small, mm -hmm. you know. But you have to kind of um, get a bit of everything, you know, in, in one night instead of mm -hmm. just focus on on one particular style. I, I, can I interrupt you there, Robbie? Sure. Um, I, I did I did forget to mention that there is currently and has been a, a, a long, long list of fabulous, wonderful, brilliant heavy metal bands that have come out of South Africa um, within the local scene because we don't get, I mean, for in, in the years of when we were excluded from the world, we only had the local bands, you know, and uh, obviously South Africa being where it is geographically, most bands can't afford to get there. When they do get there, it's a one-off show. They can play one, maybe two shows, and then move on to the other side of the world. So uh, logistically, it doesn't make sense. So the, 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 the South African metal scene is very DIY, you know, and oh. it's, had to, it's had to be. And out of that has come some of the best bands for me, you know, um, ever. I mean, currently, I mean, there's, 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 there's Deadline, there's... Um, Leading spawn, there's this, there's, there's just fabulous bands in South Africa, you know, there really is, and there always was. The, the problem is they don't get international exposure. Uh, um, they, they never could um, back in the old days because nobody wanted us for all the obvious reasons. And um, and now in in, in, in in the digital age, the bands just can't afford to tour yes. uh, because there's no there's no no revenue in digital. <laughs> and um, and uh, and it's 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 very sad. So you've got all these wonderful bands, and sadly, very few bands live longer than five years. You know, um, they they you achieve everything you can achieve in South Africa in the first couple of years. You know, you, you go to the gigs, you go to the festivals, you uh, maybe get one international invite, and, uh, and then it fizzles out, man. And it's very sad to see a lot of great bands, you know, having to throw in the towel. 
Um, that's why, you know, to be sitting here, and funny enough, I thought about this morning, if we, we had our first gig in 1993, if you told me that 27 years we would, we would be having a conversation in Dublin with the United Nations, you know, about our new... <laughs> So, how did you manage to collaborate with uh, Ross from Bancaldo for the All for One? I don't know. Um, yeah. I, I, I got a word of the music of Van Canto uh, from a friend who is who's since died, a uh, Gerard, uh, uh, and, and he he said to me, "You like this band." Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, yeah, cool. I, re I had read about them because I, I keep my ear on the underground. And um, I, I, bought, I bought the album and, and it absolutely blew my mind. I heard them play um, Gravedigger's Rebellion and um, 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 Master of Puppets and uh, uh, all of these tracks dotted in between the, all, all their own originals. And I absolutely went mad for that album. And I bought the two albums that came before that. And I had the collection, and then I went to Wacken in twenty in twenty twelve um, to do some promotional work, and I was in the backstage press area, and I can't remember how it came. Out. I think I think my brother, no, he wasn't there. Fuck's sake, I can't remember. Somehow, somehow I, I bumped into um, um, Ross. And we got chatting, and um, and and he was just one of the nicest, gentlest, lacquerist, kindest people I'd spoken to, you know. And we just hit it off. We were chatting, and he he then phoned some of his mates, uh, uh, you know, and he was talking to his mates about me, and I was phoning my mates. You can't believe it, man! I'm with Ross from Van Canto, that cool guy. I played you the record for. I'm sitting with him now, and we're getting drunk and blah blah blah. And we got on, and we had an absolutely fabulous time. And then what happened was the next year, which was, no, fuck, man, I'm talking shit. That was in, in, uh, in 2011. And then in 2012, we, we were invited to play Wacken here. And um, I bumped into, in, funny enough, I was putting up my tent and, and, and opposite me, uh, Ross was putting up his tent. I'm like, Ross, ah! And I ran over to him and he gave me beer and and we, we got on wonderfully and I said listen man we're playing we're playing on the um uh well yeah we were playing in the circus we were playing pretty early in the morning we were a bit nervous uh, about um uh you know it's been 12 years since we last played this festival if anyone will still remember us uh you know can you can you uh, perhaps get on stage? Uh, because uh, Ross, although he's Scottish born, he speaks fluent German. I, you know, so I asked him if he would introduce the band. And, um, and he said, with pleasure. And what happened was it was a disastrous morning because what happened was they'd set up this huge tent, first of all, uh, 10,000 people or 12,000 people. It's the size of a football pitch, man. And, but it was the first year they put that up at Wacken. And what happened was uh, there was treacherous weather and, the rain had come through, and uh, what happened was, uh, it was. Man, I said to my mates, I said to them, I said, if if Man of War were playing on this stage at this time, in these conditions, I wouldn't go. And anybody knows my history as a fan of Man of War. It was just too shit, man. But anyway, I was sitting backstage, and I looked out, and there was nobody there, and all of was mud and water and shit, and I was very unhappy. And um, I was sitting there thinking about how much I hated my life and, uh, and, 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 and I'd flown across the whole world and we're going to have this shitty concert and blah, 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 blah. And I looked up and there was Ross standing there in his kilt, in his full outfit, ready to introduce the band, you know. And I'll tell you, that picked me up. It really, really picked me up. I'm like, dude, you know, if you believe in us, then I believe in us, you know? And, I, and I'm not exaggerating, man. And the curtains lifted or opened or whatever the case may be. And people had come through. They had braved the shit and weather. And they were up to their bollocks in mud. And they had, and we played one of the best shows we ever played, ever, ever in our lives. Um, what should have been an audience of 12,000 was more like a couple hundred at best. But it was a perfect show. And, uh, and, and Ross from Van Canto coming there, 
getting up early in the morning, putting on his best kilt and everything to introduce us was one of the most wonderful things uh, and, and kindest gestures uh, that I needed. I needed that on that day. And I don't think to this day he understands how much that meant to me. And, uh, and, and, and thus a lovely show was played. And we, we kept in touch. And um, when, 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 when I needed uh, um, a bit more spice to be added to the All For One track, All For One's been part of our live repertoire since about 2008. And uh, we never recorded it. And um, when it was time to record, I wanted something and with more of a folk feel, um, <laughs> with a singer that could sing, not just bark out shit like me. And um, I, I, I got hold of Ross and he said, yeah, sure, man. And, and, and he, he booked a studio and he recorded it and he recorded a couple of versions of it. I mean, what a professional, man, you know. And uh, I, I sent the track to Nick. This was about two years ago because we were, we were under pressure from a label at the time to get the album done. That fell through and everything got, and I always felt really shit about it, you know, and, uh, because, you know, Nick had gone through all this. I don't know if he spent how much money he spent on doing the recording and he sent it to us and we rested on, you know, for another year or two. And, um, and yeah, to, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I love, I love Ross and I love Van Canto. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Amazing story. So, yes. did you get many responses from uh, fans for the All for One uh, video? And how did you choose them between all the responses? Um, I'll, I'll let I'll let I'll let uh, Nick answer that question. Speak, speaking of All for One, I need I need one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, send one over. I ha I haven't brought my beers with. I should have, but uh, drinking is not right. Don't do it, kids. Don't do it. Um, Check what I found today, mate. Check what I found today. A pickin' bro. Oh, a pickin' nice. <laughs> Amazing. I can't pronounce it. Okay. A Nordic okay. apple. Yeah, gonna give that a try so, now. Yeah. What is it? A lager or what? What kind of beer is it? It's a oh, beer, beer. Uh, a, a lager, bro. A lager. Okay. So I like it. Fantastic. So yeah, all for what? <laughs> yes. All for what? what? We drink. Why we drink? We drink together, not alone. You guys yeah. drink together. I, I'm alone. Um, <laughs> I must. Can I ask the question? Has anybody seen the movie? Um, still crazy. Yep. It says something. I think maybe I saw it. I don't know. This, I can. The, the song in there was "The Flame Still Burns." This is our "The Flame Still Burns" because of all the controversy with that song and eventually getting it out and mm -hmm. recorded. Sorry, carry on, bro. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, no, that's, that's exactly. That's exactly it. We obviously it's a folk song. We know that. It's a, uh, I believe it's a French, uh, a French folk song. That's been done by others and so on and so on. The, the, the version that we like the most is uh, done by Richie Blackmore, Backboard Side. Uh, his wife, Candace, sings it. And we, we, we really, really like that version. It really speaks to us. It's like we, uh, Iron Maiden had blood brothers. This is our blood brothers. That's, that's, that's to me, it's, we, we like to spread happiness. We, 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 we tend to. Uh, spread happiness by drinking quiet, uh, copious amounts of uh, alcoholic beverages. Um, and uh, th that speaks perfectly to us. Now, for in terms of, and, and, and we decided this would be good and fun to have people uh, send us their clips of drinking and whatever, you know, just having fun. Uh, it, it would be a, a, an easy music video to do and include people in it that that are usually not in front of cameras uh, to, for the world to see um and responses wise i think people like it i uh, it to me it's um uh, it's more of a, it's an inclusive sort of thing where we get to include everyone in in our story Mm -hmm. and, sh and, and, sh and share it sh share it with people 
around in around the bath way of saying when you're feeling down, put on all for one, pour yourself a drink. It could be a non-alcoholic drink, it's all right. Uh, and just be happy that and see that there are other people out there, even though you might be alone at the time, there are other people out there that will support you. That 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 will do can the I same as you that, Yes. Um, well, what, well, what also inspired the video, I mean, the song has been around forever. We recorded the song and then when this whole Corona bollocks hit us, uh, Nick and I spoke and, and uh, well, what's very sad and, and, and I'm just having a look here, a lot of, a lot of our friends and, and, and supporters in South Africa are going through a really shit time. And I don't think anybody in the world knows that we're all locked down and it's pretty crap. But in South Africa, they are locked down and they are not allowed alcohol or cigarettes. The, the, the sale of any alcohol or cigarettes in any form is banned. Banned. This was my last one. Wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 sorry, man. I have to go to hard tech now. I've got enough hard to keep it going. And yeah, and I, I said to I said to Nick, what we need to do, man, we need to make a beer drinking video for these guys, and uh, to up their spirits, man. You know, um, and uh, yeah, sorry, Rob, my heart actually breaks for you, Holmes. You know what I mean? This, uh, Very I mean, much. So. What way this happens? Why is smoke, but you know the fact that the government has banned people from smoking. For fuck's what sake. Is. You know, let the guy smoke and drink. I mean, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for for for, for yeah, my lockdown would be sucking pretty bad. You know, so anyway, we decided to put down this uh, to put out this video and um, and have everybody drinking and having a good time. And I suppose my rationale behind it is uh, if you feel like a beer, you know, put on the video and feel part of it, man. You know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, great, great, great stuff. So Robbie, we'll drink beer. <laughs> so Robbie will be turning on the video now, looking at the beer <laughs> every time. Yeah. Celebrating, celebrating. I, I hate these dudes. Dude, I, I read the funniest thing on, on News 24 just now, you know, that they might allow you to buy alcohol, but they're going to go by by your surname. So if your surname, like go in alcohol order, so A to <laughs> F are allowed to buy on Mondays and then, you know, G, uh, it's, it's, it's actually crazy, but I read that, yeah, it's, it's, it's legit, I'm so not even me kidding. Rob, me and you, Rob, would screwed because our surnames are right at the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, I know, <laughs> right, that's, that's what I'm saying, I'm probably going to have to wait till it's Thursday always, or something, I don't, it's I don't know. Clifford. It's always for Clifford to have more beers. We know that because his, his surname starts with a C. He's got to be the first to get his booze. Yes. I know, I know, I know what they're thinking. <laughs> No, yeah, I've some friends with surnames high up lockdown, in the alphabet. If I was in lockdown and, and I wasn't allowed to drink, bro, I promise you, I promise you. Man, I know you'd be a grumpy motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't take you don't take a beer away from a man. You don't do that, man. You just don't do that. Yes. You know, <laughs> especially when yes. he's having, you know, hey, here's a shit time, and you know what else? You can't drink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd it so apart from this any other plans as, uh, because you are done with the final album it's not the Ooh, final it's not the final we changed our minds <laughs> yeah we changed our minds okay it? it's, it's like it's like Tyson making a comeback isn't it <laughs> isn't that yeah. Again? yeah it is a bit like that Jo uh, in Australia, Johnny Farnham, you know, you, you know the song, uh, Johnny Farnham's, uh, uh, I don't know, that doesn't matter. He's been doing uh, comeback tours since 2000. His last tour was in 2002. Last tour. Johnny Farnham is the comeback king. We will, we will do more albums. <laughs> Same sort of thing. Um, and what's basically spurred us on to, to do more, uh, Trevor from, from the recording company that's, that is, or from the record company that is putting the album out, 
he obviously we sent him down first so he can uh, start distributing it to to all the platforms he was like you guys can't stop this is not on. that is not on i i i i i refuse to accept that you guys are never gonna make that album this is too good and well we're having having with clifford um basically uh, a couple of nights later we we decided to, oh, all right let's let's do this it's not that difficult from the other side of the world why the hell not so it's not going to be the last album we had decided it's going to be the last album but we can change our minds right good stuff yeah. good to know good to know good to know like now <laughs> it's like life and so on so we will remind you like if you forget yes. more <laughs> on today all, all the pressure is on i've got to go and write stuff now hey mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you look, so if you look uh, look back at your career and so on, are there any things you are uh, proud of and things you would do differently? So, Robbie, you can uh, start. Jason, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where you, when you say do things differently. I don't know. Um, but yeah, we have so much of history you know in 20 years and the memories you know like they're all very vivid you know the out of town tours and you know we're, uh, everything was spectacular man i wouldn't change a thing yeah um maybe you know you can say it man <laughs> <laughs> no jeez where are you going bro <laughs> <laughs> okay so Cliff, go for it. Tell us. Tell us, Clifford, what do you think? <laughs> no, um, you know, I, I, this, we had, we had, we had so many setbacks, man. You know, um, I'm not saying we were supposed to be the biggest band in the world now. By no means am I saying that, but we, we, we were just in the wrong hands with the wrong people for, for, for too many years. We had some really poor management and, uh, uh, anyway, I'm not even going to open that can of worms. But yeah, no, there's, 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 um, there's, uh, there's so many milestones this band achieved in 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 a country where it's unachievable. You know, um, we we, you know what? You know, this is this is this is our podcast. We're allowed to brag tonight, so maybe it's a good idea. So I'm going to brag. You know, um, go for it. The 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 platform was laid by the bands that came before us. You know, I'm talking about bands like uh, Odyssey and uh, Ragnarok and The Blast and uh, uh, Razor and and uh, even earlier than that, Stingray and Black Rose. They were wonderful bands. And I, I think we were the first South African band to really um, develop uh, metal culture. Um, and, 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 I know that sounds twatish. I know, and and by, by by no means am I trying to gain any accolades for myself. But we really we forced that. We were the first band that I know of that embraced heavy metal like Judas Priest did in the in 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 the seventies. You know what I mean? And say this is who we are, and this is what we do. We don't want your alternative music. We don't want your pop. We don't want your 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 shitty new metal and bollocks. We want we are a heavy metal band, and that's what we do. And by that virtue alone, we gathered a, a very strong little pocket of support that that, that, that we carried with us through the years, and um, we, we, with with that we were able to we were able to do some very successful European tours. We were able to do some uh, very successful African tours. We played in Botswana in front of the president uh, on National AIDS Day. Hmm? Um, with Miss Botswana introducing us because we were we were inviting guests of the government because of the noises that we had made in South Africa. Um, so, so there's all these wonderful things that that, that just uh, I mean I can go on all day. You know, it's it, um, all, all this rolled into into I'm I'm, I'm I'm waffling. Anyway, carry on. You answer the question there, Rob. No, uh, you took it from you took it from me. It was I mean, like you said, I mean there's. I would love to spend like a whole afternoon or like a whole day just drinking beers and going through all the stories because 
we have so many stories to tell and, and like it would be awesome to to get all those out you know lovely memories my my favorite memory is 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 a story that's that's as old as the hills but uh in in the year 2000 we we were touring uh europe uh for, for the first time and we were a bunch of kids and we didn't know what was going on and we we, we went to the the wacken festival the wacken open air in germany and um we arrived there as fans and this is a beautiful story man and i'll never forget this as long as i live we arrived there as fans and we went to go get our um arm arm, arm bands uh and the guy said uh, oh ha agro from south africa i said yes yes we are agro from south africa how are you doing he says you can't get your bands today you can only get the bands tomorrow so we're like okay bollocks so anyway tomorrow came and we went to the um whatever you call it, the ticket place to go get our armbands because mm -hmm. the, the festival had arranged us backstage passes and all this. We were very excited to be there. And then this guy, this German guy says to us, when we get there in the next morning, I think this was the, th was the Friday. We arrived there on the Thursday and this was now on the Friday and, and, the, and the promote, well, whoever was there says, oh, hello, Agro. Uh, I'm not going to give you the armbands. I said, no, please, man. We've traveled halfway across the world to be here. He says, um, well, the, I've, I've got good news and the bad news, you know? I said, uh, all right, well, what's, what's, what's the bad news? And uh, in, a, in a beautiful German humor, he says, the bad news is there is no bad news. <laughs> I said, oh, so what's the good news? <laughs> <laughs> he says, the good news is we have had a cancellation. Immolation from America have canceled and you are playing on the main stage tomorrow afternoon. You know? I'm like, excuse me, let me go change my underpants. <laughs> and um, so we were, we were then, uh, we, we, Robbie had to go and phone somebody in Berlin to organize equipment. We had to drive across to go and get amps and, and, and guitars or whatever you drive all the way back. And uh, and and the next day, we we performed uh, to in in excess of of thirty forty thousand people um, at at Wacken Fest on 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 the main stage. That was uh, that was that's a pretty cool story, man. Of lots of people expecting emulation, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> this is no. not the expected, you know. And, um, and and we were jumping around. I mean, ah. It was lovely, yeah. It was very great story, very historically. And and that 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 trip formed a, a love affair with with me and German and uh, Germany and and and, and the Wacken Festival in particular. And I've I've since been back, you know, twelve times. You know, it's just the coolest place in the world to be, man. So let's go back to Nick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's your coffee? It's finished. Yeah, it's finished. finished. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back and take some coffee. We're not going to morning beers, man. Well, I, I thought about it. I really did. But then I thought, shit, I'm going to be going in a car. I don't <laughs> think it's a great idea to, to, to have beers in the car because the cops here are quite uh, funny. They, or not funny. Actually, I hope, don't, I hope you don't park next to like a children's playground or something. No, I mean, I'm in the parking lot, uh, be, behind, behind a, 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 a bottle store, actually. <laughs> Funny enough, but it? then it's open until nine o'clock and it's only seven. Shit, shit. Anyway, back to me. <laughs> oh, Nick, tell us a bit of your background. Why Australia? You born there or you went? From Bulgaria. Oh, no. uh, my uh, long story short, I was born in Bulgaria. When I South Africa when I was eight years old. Uh, went to South when I was thirteen years old, uh, in ninety-three with my parents. My parents decided to immigrate there. Uh, then I met then I met these uh, wonderful idiots and uh, a lot of fun was had. And then my wife, uh, who became my, the, the, my wife, who became my wife afterwards, uh, she's uh, she's an Australian citizen, and she 
she decided that she wanted to come back here. And she said, listen, do you want to come with? And I said, okay. So... There you are. <laughs> love. It's out of love, man. That's what it is. <laughs> Everything is... Uh, and uh, no, uh, so 13 years in Bulgaria, I was, I was a kid, obviously, we went to South Africa 17 years, and I've been here for 10 years almost now. It's, um, it's, it's a, you see, the thing is between South Africa and Australia, it's very easy to, uh, to transition from one to the other. It's a bit more difficult to flip, I know, because it's complete, island to South Africa is completely different, but Australia to South Africa is very, very similar. Uh, it's a massive, massive place. Uh, the people are, are quite, quite relaxed, to events, similar sort of attitudes. And, but you uh, it's, it's, rugby and shit cricket, man. <laughs> well, uh, that, that, that's why I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's got it's it, it, it is increases obviously, uh, but uh, I've been here for so, so long now that uh, mm. it has become home. How is the metal scene there? Is it big? There are festivals, bands touring. Okay, so Australia, being a huge, huge place, uh, there are. Four or five big cities and nothing in between, obviously. Generally. Um, so in Sydney, there is obviously, I mean, it's, there's four and a half million people living here in, in the city. Uh, there, there is a scene, but uh, there aren't many clubs. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a, it's not as, you, you don't go to shows as much as. Melbourne, for example. Melbourne is the cultural capital of Australia. It doesn't matter who says what. There, it's that, that's the epicenter of, of the metal scene, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, most, yeah. most of the good bands, most of the good bands come and out of besides, there. Besides ACDC and Mortal Sin, who have you got there, bro? Pegasus? Who have we got? Pegasus, Lord. Uh, Papa and Drive there from Byron Bay, but that's that's not <laughs> <Wait, it. mate. laughs> uh, uh, Twelve Foot Ninja. There's many, many bands. Everybody's in a band. I, I was in a band in Australia until we released an album, um, but uh, had to decided to leave after a few years. Yeah, Since, no, right. I bought the T-shirt, man. Yes, you did. <laughs> Uh, and no, it's, it's compared to Europe uh, or what I've seen of Europe, it is a bit more of a fragmented scene where <coughs> uh, people that listen to death metal won't go to a power metal show at all. Uh, it's not a, it, it, it will never happen. Uh, they, they will stick to their thing and that's it. It's a bit more fragmented. Mm -hmm. Whereas me, if it's a good band, I'll go and watch. Of course, I'll go and support uh, if, if it's uh, right across the genre. But uh, it's 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 an, it's an interesting place where it's a bit more America-like than than Europe. It's okay. a bit, if you've been to the States, people Slayer! all the time. It's a bit like that. Oh, good, good. So you play uh, <laughs> guitars and keyboards. <coughs> at the moment, yeah. Yes, and uh, yeah. what is your what is your favorite uh, instrument you play? No, um, now I'm really going to interrupt her. Nick doesn't just play the keyboards and the guitar. Mm -hmm. yeah. He plays the flute uh, no. and the recorder and the triangle. I don't think there's a thing he can't play. <laughs> I I think like a bird. He plays. He plays everything. He's an ab. You know what? Ab so long as there's a Nick Vassilov, there will always be an aggro because there will always be someone who can write better than anybody else I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's one man soul. Huh? Uh, <laughs> it's a one man band, and uh, I'm I'm very happy that he asks me to sing for him. <laughs> 
no, I, 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 and my fucking beer is frozen. I, 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 uh, from, from what you can get, uh, what, what you get it by now, we can talk hand leg, leg of a donkey, okay? We, we do talk a lot. <laughs> we yeah, we talk, we like to talk shit. Uh, I play guitar keyboards in the band. But yeah, as Cliff said, I play other things too. I always wanted Nick to be a full time Hammond organ player. I used to beg uh, him. I've always wanted to do it. Always wanted to be. <laughs> I always wanted to be a thrash band that sounded like Deep Purple. Deep Purple. <laughs> Nobody wanted to play thing... thrash organ. <laughs> well, we like to thrash our organs. We like to thrash our organs, but that's a different thing. Um... <laughs> ah! That's Christoph. We have a, we have a guest. <laughs> Sorry, lads. <laughs> hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> Us. So yeah, I, that that's me. I I play things. <laughs> I try to play things. Yeah. I I'm not I'm not great at things. I'm not great at all of them. Uh, I'm not fantastic. Uh, what do you but prefer I, more? What do you prefer, keyboards or guitar? I, prefer, I don't have a preference. Oh. I don't have a preference. It, uh, it's a it, it's got its place. Everything has got its place in music. Mm -hmm. Live, live. I prefer playing guitar because you've got a bit more freedom to move around. Yes. Uh, really, I prefer playing keyboards because you can do a lot. Uh, for me, I can do a lot more with it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends on the situation. Yeah, Nick's a Swiss Army knife of. Uh, yeah, he's the Swiss agro Swiss Army knife. Yeah, yeah I do everything. <laughs> uh, what it is. So, can you tell us the, your influences? Let's start from uh, Robbie. Oh, jeez, I suppose, <laughs> like many, okay, I, I grew up listening to Metallica um, and Iron Maiden. I think uh, the first album that I came across of um, Iron Maiden was, um, I think the first song I heard was Can I Play With Madness? From Iron oh. Maiden, from there, I fell in love. Um, obviously, at school we traded tapes, you know, which was mainly Metallica, Halloween. So yeah, from influences, that's pretty much where where that all started. Okay. Um, nowadays, I like you know your In Flames, uh, uh, Sabaton, you know, oh. uh, stuff like that. Good stuff. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. Halloween is my favorite band. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, also Cliff Halloween is very good. <laughs> he likes very much. I, I like a bit of everything. I'm not. I'm not. You know. So I like my power metal, my thrash, and, and some of my death metal. You know, and, like, mm -hmm. and even some some black metal from occasion. You know, from time to time. So I'm, I listen to a bit of everything. Okay. Yeah. So. Nick. Hey, Nick. Nick, can I ask you something? So you're wearing a fire wind t-shirt. They yes. released an album yesterday. Today, today, today. today, yeah, yeah. Well, to me, to me. Uh, have you listened to it? No, no, I'm still because I can listen it, but uh, no, I want to receive it first from the post, and after right. I'm waiting the vinyl and the CD. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I can't wait. Is what I'm trying to say. I've been, I've been a big Gus G fan since since the early 2000s, obviously. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I know Fire. So, they, so, they are friends of mine. Yeah, <laughs> I know them. They are great guys. Greece, Greece, small place. Everybody knows everybody. I know how it is. My <laughs> <laughs> you have. Uh, so, what is your influences? Oh me. Oh, me. Okay, so I started. I started listening. So when I was a kid, to Bulgarian folk music, that's what I played. I played Bulgarian flute for the first 10 years of my life. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, the, 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 the rhythms that, that, that are not the 4-4 four, four normal rock stuff, that, that got ingrained in the, in the brain somewhere a long time ago. And it, it has definitely brought, I, I've definitely brought it into the music that I do. And then it was Michael Jackson. 
<laughs> Michael Jackson, yeah? Of course. Oh, man. Seriously? <laughs> and Madonna? Goes, uh, no. The <laughs> Madonna, no. Only Michael Jackson. Like, uh, it's, so, and, and then it was Michael Jackson because my neighbor absolutely loved Michael Jackson. He was even doing the moves. And, and then my, my cousin started, uh, my cousin played me, I think it was Halloween, the EP. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. And, and Annihilator. Okay. Another uh, when When Crystal Ann comes in, the first thing, obviously, that's it. I was like, t- I'm 10 years old and I'm running around going, like, this, is, this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. Crystal Ann yeah. into Epson Hell. That's it. Um, that was my big thing, and and then from the power metals of uh, Halloween and Gamma Ray, Van Guardian, obviously, uh, those ones graduated to the Swedish death metal scene, and uh, the the, the both Gothenburg and the Stockholm stuff, uh, and then then I discovered prog prog uh, rock and prog metal, and mm-hmm. I'm still I'm still on that um, on that trip. At the moment, it's uh, Leprous and Haken. That there's nothing else at the moment. <laughs> okay, great. So, Cliff, what is your influences? Me, my influence. Influ- oh, Clifford. <laughs> Deep purple. <laughs> what have we got, man? Halloween. <laughs> um, yeah, Halloween. Halloween is my favorite band. Um, um, I, I'm. German heavy metal, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Halloween, except Scorpions, Rage, Running Wild, um, Death Row. Uh, oh man, the list goes on. You know, um, I, I think that was my my first. I got into Metallica and uh, Man of War at a very young age, mm-hmm. um, um, but I, I, I think some, somewhere in my life I realized. Every band I love is actually from Germany, you know, uh, that, that was, was weird for me. And then later on in life, all my favorite bands were from Finland, you know, now things that moved into darker stuff like uh, Sentenced and, um, uh, well, well, I suppose some of the happier stuff like uh, 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 Nightwish and um, Sonata oh, Arctic and, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, um, I suppose if I have to nail it down to, Three bands. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I would say uh, Scorpions, um, Accept, and Halloween. Um, mm-hmm. The bands that I, I just I, 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 I'll never get tired of. I love every album, every song. I hang on to every word, every note. Always will, man. You know, and and then I suppose. Um, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I, I like I like the real early '70s stuff as well. I love early Judas Priest and I love Deep Purple. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, and a lot of my time is consumed with, uh, I suppose, nowadays we'll call it adult orientated rock, you know, AOR stuff. I mean, I, I mean, I listen to a lot of a lot of rock. You know? Know. Yeah, um, just just good old classic rock. I mean, uh, Boston is the best band in the world. Hey? For about a year, journey, man. Journey, fuck, man. Journey rule, man. Jesus. I love that stuff, but you, you know what? Eh? I, I don't listen to any heavy bands anymore, really. I don't, I don't, I, I listen to black metal and melodic black metal and melodic death metal, but I can't do traditional. Brutal death. I just can't do it, man. I just can't listen to guttural death metal anymore. I, I, don't, I have nothing against it. If I walk into a party and they're playing Cannibal Corpse, I'll go, yeah, but I just don't put it on anymore. Man. Mm-hmm. I, just, I just don't like brutal riffs going nowhere. I like I always like a, a melodic thread that goes through, you know, and so, I mean, I can find that melody in, uh, in the new Dark Throne album and I can find that melody in, in Asia and Boston, you know, that's... Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know what, uh, Nick? Any melodic band, bro? Any melodic band? Yeah. Great, great. So, so, so yeah, interesting influences and quite a lot. And what about 
COVID-19 uh, situation, do you think it will affect the music scene? Yes. I think it already has. Uh, <laughs> it, it has. People I mean, there's no doubt that it already has. So what do you think? Will there be gigs or will it be different now? I don't know. <laughs> look at look at the. Maybe there's there's a bit of an overhype about the whole situation, and hopefully things will get back to normal at some stage. You want to see people marching and headbanging together, you know, like arm in arm. You want to see that sort of stuff again, and I don't think that we should should let this virus you know, do you determine. Bro, <laughs> how big is? Let's <laughs> carry on. Okay. <laughs> no, but I mean, I'm not. <laughs> washing arm in arm. Sorry, okay. Uh, no, uh, no, head banging arm in arm like brothers, man. Fuck. And washing and uh, like, you know. Hmm. Uh, uh, I think I think it has affected it has affected the music industry, especially. Uh, well, uh, obviously, metal definitely, uh, especially the bands that are sort of the, the middle tier bands that only survive because they can talk um, and that now they can't they are really really struggling and a lot of bands will die because of this unfortunately um, but at the same time because you're sitting at home and have nothing to do a lot of good music is coming out. Yes. So, I reckon in about six to nine months, we'll have a million albums that are all absolutely incredible. Because people have had time to, to work on it a lot more than if they, if they were on the road trying to write. I, 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 it, positives and negatives, obviously. But uh, yeah, the the, the middle the, the middle tier bands they, they they are struggling at the moment, big time, unfortunately. But good music coming, I promise. Listen to the Agro one; it's good. They're those guys, they they they're like not even middle. They they're like down low, but good good old. <laughs> yeah, we did the shit before it was cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was sitting at home writing rips, not going out before the government <laughs> told me to not go out. <laughs> exactly. And I will be listening to Argo instead of going out t tomorrow. So, yeah. Then, Good idea. Yeah, so for <laughs> these were more questions. Now we have uh, the viewers questions as they are watching. I do. If someone, and this is the best for the viewers to come up uh, with questions as we are nearly um, at the end. So let's start uh, with the first uh, viewer question. Wesley van Aden is asking, need a road crew? And who was the best roadie? Roadie. Wes, um, yeah. Wesley. We had a dedicated <laughs> stage manager. Robin McCabe, who was, Robin, who was our everything. So we have to give a shout out to Robin McCabe, but um, yeah, Wesley, he was close second, I think. Yeah. Hey, Wes. Wesley. Wesley's always caved my base in. <laughs> Wesley, 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 Wesley joined the fold uh, early on in our career. Wesley and Robin, they, they were there still in the, in the early 90s. Yeah. yeah, a lot of guys came yeah. and went, but those two, those two, you could almost count them. They were there from the beginning, and they were there at the end. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Robin and Wes, champions, champions, absolutely beautiful human souls. Those two. We we've been very lucky to. Uh, while I was still in the band, obviously, I I got to uh, experience these guys friendship and everything we were very lucky to have a lot of good people helping us out of the goodness of their heart and because they love us and we love them back uh, we would we'd be very lucky to have these people around us it's, we uh, paid them well we, <laughs> and 
a lot of them used to buy us beers too. So thanks for the beers, Road Crew. You you have you, you have kept me drunk for many years. Yeah. <laughs> so another question from Darren Kilderholm. As we were speaking before for t-shirts, are we going to see any t-shirts of Agro for uh, sale? Send a CD. Yes, we will. In time. I think that's, that's all. That's all going to happen. Yeah. The there, there will be there will be merch through Amazon. Um, that's being negotiated at the moment. Uh -huh. Um. But yeah, I think first things first, we needed to get the album out, and uh, we'll take care of we'll take care of the business side of things afterwards. Yeah. Cool. There will be. There will be too much. Yes. Cool. So uh, another question from Jörg Locker. He says, "Hey guys, why do you always drink light beer?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold, Jörg. Oh no. <laughs> Ah, Uncle Yorg. By the, the question way, is, Yorg. is Yorg, why do you always drink absinthe, man? <laughs> that guy is mad. That man is absolutely mad. I love the two bits. Him and his wife, uh, Nicole, beautiful, beautiful people. Why do we drink light beers? Because we can drink a million of them. That's why. We this, it's a true story though, Nick. We always had this uh, theory because we, as a band, we used to drink a lot and sometimes getting drunk got in the way of our drinking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Lower alcohol, we can drink more. There we go, Jorg. Jorg! I'm called Jorg. Jorg. Darren Kildare, home again, ask uh, for Nick. Tell us about the story about the falling through the stage. <laughs> <laughs> One minute he was there, the next minute he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my, my side of the story is not that impressive. What, the way people saw it is the funny bit. Cliff, tell us what you saw. I'm having a pee, man. He's gone. Ah, he's having a pee. <laughs> he's having a pee. <laughs> refill, All refill. Right. I'll, start, I'll start the story and uh, maybe the others can, can uh, jump in. So we are playing this festival that uh, our management organized. Uh, we he, he, just outside of Johannesburg, I think it was. And we put the stage up ourselves. Ro uh, Robin, our stage manager, Robin McCabe, he... He got the stage uh, going. Um, it was a very DIY sort of thing, and it was lovely. Uh, but bands all day on it, uh, running around, whatever. I get up. We we it's probably like nine ten o'clock at night. We are, we get up on stage. Uh, all our instruments are set up, ready to go, and I can just feel that the the stage is a bit wobbly. And because I'm not 60 kilograms uh, <laughs> since I was about four years old, um, I decided just to just to test to see how 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 much I can jump around. Uh, not realizing that um, the, that that is not a good idea, so uh, I, I jumped a few times in one spot, and the whole fucking stage caved in. And I went straight through. <laughs> now, what was funny was he was there and then he wasn't. And I was the first one to see that he was gone. His keyboards were still standing there, but but he wasn't there. And I ran over to the other side of the stage and he was now pulling himself out of this hole. But what was so funny was... He, he, because the stage, he, he was so awkward, and he was. I, I tried to grab him, but his his pants, his pants got caught on one of the jagged edges that he had fallen through. So the more I pulled him, the more his pants got pulled down. So I, it was, it was, it was. What do I do? Do I let him fall down, or do I pull him out and let him show his ass to the whole audience? And um, this is 
the, the, what was so funny, the, we, we, we were literally sound checking. The band, the, the, the audience was waiting for us to start and Nick had fallen through the stage. And the, the, we greeted the audience and it was a big crowd that night. We greeted the audience with Nick's green underpants and ours. And we pulled him out and, and, and later we started the show. It was beautiful, man. Because I'd obviously fallen through and there was shouts everywhere. My my pants were split and uh, I wasn't playing in my undies, all right? I wasn't, I promise. Uh, but uh, my 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 leg was bleeding quite, quite, quite profusely. So... I'll, I'll be playing my keyboards, and from time to time, I'll just. No, but let's let's so, let's let's so, credit so, where it's due. Right. Yeah, credit where it's due. You fell through the stage. You had a traumatic injury. You you showed your bum off to uh, a thousand people, and you you got up and you played an entire show. Yep, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. So I would I would flick my foot so the so the because the blood was. Uh, uh, on my foot, I'll just flick it, and the front, the people at the front of the stage would, would just get sprayed by a bit of big blood. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. It's, it was like a black metal show without it wanting to be a black metal band. Brutal, brutal. Playing. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, Nick, coming straight to the stage. <sighs> Amazing story. <Yeah>, <laughs> So Cliff is back. Your uh, locker wanted uh, to make cheers. Cheers, Uncle Jörg. Big kisses for Uncle Jörg. One of the most beautiful people in one of the most beautiful parts. Jörg took care of us in Bavaria uh, a couple of years ago. And um, I love him and Nicole and uh, their family of ours now, man. You know, uh, we, met, we met in Wacken. Uh, we met when we played there, and it's a, it's a funny story. I was I was crying because I was homesick. It's pathetic. I was I was missing my wife and child, and I was crying. And uh, he he came up to me and he gave me aspirin and beer and said, "Don't worry, brother. All is good. All is good." Women, women they, they looked after me, and I was drunk and homesick. Yeah. And I love you, Lord. Mwah. Mwah. Next question is from Wes Hitzing. It's for Cliff. Oh, Cliff. No. Cliff, tell us about your uh, nudity. <laughs> Wes Exhibition. Is the worst person in the world. <laughs> no, 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 that's no, not. No. No, <laughs> no we, we, we used to. Uh, there's one story in. in, in I mean, we, we used to play nude <laughs> a few times. Um, and uh, there was one gig in uh, Nelspruit where um, we were playing with a, uh, at a festival. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the one Nick, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, where's my boy? M must be referring to is um, the gig in Nelspruit where, where we, got, we, 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 we attacked Chromium while they were playing. Um, in the nude, and um, and then <laughs> it was very hard for them to finish their show, man. And uh, it was pathetic. And uh, and then they, they did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, anyway, can we, were, we move on? All, <laughs> all, all the okay, all the beds from out of town were staying in the same sort of hostel sort of thing. So it was still four beds. Um, Girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, wives, husbands, we were all staying at the same spot. We were getting very, very, very drunk. Everything involves around the drinking. It's, uh, it's yes. unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they moved. We were supposed to play, let's say, a talk or something. And then the promoters came and said, listen, everybody's having a great time. Can we just finish with you playing later? To which we went, okay, we've been uh, moderating our drinking to play at 8 o'clock and be sober. But now you're moving us to 10 o'clock or whatever. This is not good because we're already mm, not, not, not in the best position. 
So we, we decided to go up to the band that was playing before us and just grind against them butt naked. All of us. And then, <laughs> and then when, when the whole thing finished, we played our gig. Well, I think I fell asleep on my keyboard or something along those lines. Cliff was hiding behind the drummer because uh, it was so bad. We were terrible. And uh, we, the whole gig finished. We went back to this hostel and everybody got naked. All the bands, everyone. Uh, it, was, it, it, was, uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, yeah. Wesley, you've got good memory, sir. <laughs> good. So another question uh, from Wesley from uh, Aiden. Yeah. Does he have his proudly South, uh, South African tattoo? Uh -oh. Uh, see. Yeah. Oh, Is it coming uh, out, Cliff? Um, I, I am. I am African. I am proudly South African. Uh, always, always will be. And uh, you know, uh, yes, I live in Ireland, and Ireland's my home, and it's a beautiful place. And I think he's talking about the tramp stamp. Get in there, man. I'm getting it. Man. I'm getting but I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember which side it is, man. I think. Can you see it, man? Okay. No, we didn't. I think I think you're gonna talk and do it at the same time. Uh, um, a uh, a mark that's on uh, every product in South Africa that's uh, made and sold and manufactured in South Africa. So yeah, it's I am a product of Africa and I'm proud of it, man. Yeah, so that's that's my tattoo. Yeah, it's still there. Oh, no problem. Cool. I've gotten so old and fat, I can't see it anymore, man. <laughs> hey, it used to be this big. Now it's about this big, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it used to be up here, now it's moved down a bit, eh? <laughs> Cliff. Cliff. Yo. Yo. Dane. Our friend Dane. Jane yeah? asking, uh, can you show us your Halloween tattoo? My Halloween tattoo? Which one? Which one? <laughs> the keys. Tattoos. All of them, all of them. <laughs> You're just trying to make him go nude. I yeah. understand that. Yeah. This is painful, man. <laughs> This is the office chair breaking. That's the pumpkin. About the pumpkin. <laughs> wow, nice. What's <laughs> your Halloween tattoo, Nick? All of them. Okay, did I say the wrong thing? Everything died. <laughs> oh. Okay. We can see. Oh, we can see you, dude. <laughs> Everything is all right. <laughs> so, uh, and of course, I accept, accept. Metal heart. Oh, metal heart. Nice. That's what. <laughs> but I like the metal, yeah. <laughs> so that was everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, that was everything. I assume. I think so. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move to another topic. Per Peter Dixon is asking Cliff, what is your favorite striper song? <laughs> um, surrender, yeah. I'll have to say Surrender. Um, from the Soldiers Under Command album, yeah. Um, yeah, how, how do you choose a song with a band that's got such a great catalog? You know, um, I love every Striper album. Uh, In God We Trust was a bit weak, overproduced, and too sugary. You know, but still a good album. Um, Against the Law, I, 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 I didn't like Against the Law much, um, but everything else perfect. Yeah, but I think my favorite song, the song I always go back to, is um, it's probably Surrender. Yeah, I love that song, man. I love it so much. Yeah. Uh, Darren Kilder from Ask uh, Robbie uh, to sponsor a beer. 
I, I, to I told you, I just had my last one. I'm, I'm done. Until, until this lockdown is over. But when this lockdown is finished, you and me, we're going to go. When this lockdown is done, me and Darren will go for a few beers. Nick? Darren and I have known, Darren and I have known each other since we were kids. We used to go to the same pub when we were kids. By the way, I'm driving at the moment. I'm going, I'm going back home. They should be awake by now. Uh, and I'm talking. I thought, I thought maybe the cops came to scare you away. I mean, something. Nah. Uh, so I've known Darren for a very long time. Shut up, my brother. That's okay. He is the funniest, funniest, funniest dude I've ever, ever, ever met in my life. He's got the driest sense of humor that absolutely appeals to me. I've, uh, half of my routine, comedy routine, I've learned from that man. He's the, he's the best, uh, best dude in the world. As far as both people go, he's the nicest blonde person I have, I've ever known. Shout out to Darren. Cool. So, Wesley von Aden is asking what personal rituals did you guys have to get your mind in the game before a gig? Just lots of drinking. Oh, everything comes back to that, doesn't it? I don't know. Hey, geez, it was just. Just show up on time, I guess. Yeah, just I'd be fine knowing that Cliff made it to the show, right? You know, always stressing that everybody makes it on time. Yeah, then I'd be fine. Uh, it's always bringing attention. It was always bringing attention. I always said to the voice, um, if the butterflies start going away before a gig, it's time to give it up. Uh, what what we were stressed about? Not not about the playing, whatever. But just uh, more, more about um, if the sound is going to be good, if, if the crowd is going to be fine. Uh, that, that's 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 what I worried about most. I, I had I had no ritual really. Um, just basic basic vocal warm ups. Uh, usually one or two beers and. Uh, and a quick prayer, man. Yeah, that's. Uh, I guess that was me. Yeah, I was good to go, man. Yeah. Good, good. So we have uh, one more question from Kelly van der Linde. When, oh, yeah, yeah. when are you guys? We are going to make a hip hop album. <laughs> that's not going to happen. But I'll tell you something. I, I was uh, with Kelly's husband today. With, uh, one of my favorite boys in the world. And, uh, we were listening to a fellow by the name of Tom McDonald. And uh, man, the, uh, a hip hop artist, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not as biased as I used to be. Yeah. Kelly, I'm going to get you for this. <laughs> I don't know. It's not about this anymore, it's about this. I don't know how to make hip hop. I really don't. Uh, from from a technical point of view, I absolutely have no idea how to even go about it. So, sorry, Kelly. I can't do it. I don't think I can. <laughs> cool. So that were um, the fewer questions. And now we are nearing the end. So can you tell me what things you are looking forward to? You told me. Yes. Sorry, I was I, I drifted there. Sorry, what was the question? So things you are looking forward to. Oh, things I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah. In the context of the band. Yeah, more in general, like what's your spirit now? What are you looking forward to? No, I'm happy, man. I'm I'm happy. <laughs> I'm I'm good. Man. <laughs> I've got a I've got, I've got such a wonderful family and such a wonderful group of friends, and uh, and still have this band and these fucking dickheads with me. <laughs> it's so beautiful, man. It's so wonderful, and I'm very happy, man. Um, uh, I, I don't have an answer to your question. Um. Uh, 
I, I'm just looking forward to, to more of this, a lot more of this. Um, um, I, I, I look forward to going to more concerts and more festivals. And, um, you know, the fact that I've gotten to this age, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 next year and I'm still doing this and I'm still loving this as much as I did when I was a, a young teenager. And, um, you know, things have changed. Yeah, I'm, I'm a lot more responsible. I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more, more, more settled. I, I absolutely adore my wife and my family and my, my children and my, my little grandchild. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, man. I'm, I'm in a very, very happy place. So uh, what am I looking forward to? M more of this. Yeah. Cool. And you, uh, Robbie? Um, I kind of agree with with Cliff. Actually, you know, if if um, if Cliff and Nick, you know, want to carry on writing and stuff like that together, this is, you know, I'm I'm all for it. And I'm currently, you know, that's that's the boat that I'm in. I'd love to carry this on for a lot while longer. You know, as long as we've got friends, beer, and you know, we got we can make shit happen. And I'm looking forward to to. To this album getting out there and like and, and getting the reaction and and, and seeing that's the you know, like if people want more you know I'm, I'm sure we can do more and I hope people want more. Let's go. Cool. And I see that Nick is be is back in the car. He's not allowed in the house. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I, I, I had to go for a piss. <laughs> um, yeah, not not allowed in the house yet. No. Uh, what am I looking forward to? Uh, I'm looking forward to writing another album in terms of musically. I, I do like writing. Um, I, I look forward to spending the day with my, with my, with my wife and my daughter. Uh, it's it, take it at the moment, the way things are with this COVID-19 uh, stuff happening. It has it has slowed everything down in a good way for me. Uh, it puts everything more into perspective, and it's it's given me the the time to appreciate my my family and uh, my, uh, the the people that I love a lot more than uh, than I thought. I I obviously loved them before too. But uh, spending time with them is more important now, it seems. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, otherwise, I'm looking forward to going back to South Africa to see my parents and other friends. And uh, maybe coming over to you guys in Europe and uh, just traveling around the world, going to gigs and stuff. That's all. Life in general. So yeah, cool. So uh, now I'm passing the microphone to uh, Veronica, who has been monitoring everything. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Back here. Hello. Uh, Hi. So basically, Hi. we were running a quiz. Well, not quiz. It's a poll um, about your new album. We are asking the viewers uh, which the songs that they were favorite with, and uh, runner up was um, All for One. Everybody know that. <laughs> and uh, the winner so far, uh, please say any drum roll. Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good little number there. Yeah. Good job, man. Good job, man. John, John wrote the number and the lyrics. Um, credit where it's due, man. It's a, it's a potent thrash song. And it's, uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, no. I think it's a good time. So. <laughs> oh. every, every, everybody, every, every artist, when they put out a new album, they always say this is the best album ever. I'm not going to say that, but I'm going to say that. That's, that's a fantastic, fantastic track. It's a good song, man. It's good. It's it's um it's good. It's I like it. It's I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. That's quite strange because yeah, I mean, we haven't heard it for so long and to for it to come out now it's like it's like a new track to all of us I think, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite song on the album, Robbie? 
Um, I, actually, destruction. As soon as I first heard it, I'm, I'm like, you know, when when I get when I get an earworm, and I, I kind of like it gets stuck on repeat, you know. And I quite like destruction at the moment. Um, heavy falls the blade. Uh, be a close second. Yeah, uh, but I'm still giving the whole album a proper listen. So, yeah. And you best have the edge. The edge, really? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. The song, man. That it's. Uh, I had to. That, that that song. I had to basically reconstruct from the beginning. So. Uh, so you fell in love with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be on the album at all because it pretty much had nothing. It just had a bit of drum and a bit of bass um, and some vocals out of time. Uh, and it, it took a long time to, to, to do it properly. And that to me is is, is my favorite song, yeah. Because I probably spend most time on that. <laughs> cool, man. Cool, cool. cool. You want to leave? Me? Um, there's two songs, eh? Two songs, eh? Probably Podagra because that's about my favorite toe, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, um, Smoke and Mirrors, eh? Yeah, Smoke and Mirrors because it's very, very personal and um, I'm not going to discuss it on this particular platform because it's that personal. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, it's, it's about someone I love dearly and someone who's uh, risen above and... Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and it's uh, I'm cool, man. Yeah, yeah. So I have to say those two songs uh, from from a lyrical perspective. Yeah, uh, musically, I really love to walk in shadows and um, the the um, the piece before that, uh, the 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 sort of introduction to the song. Um, it reminds me. It's so much of Simon and Garfunkel. Um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That that that's my answer. Yeah. Yeah, I have to listen also properly, but uh, a bit I have listened. I like the walking shadows. I like the keyboards in the start. <laughs> Thanks. <It's> really nice. <laughs> that's, one, that's one of the two things I wrote on the album. That that was my contribution yeah. writing wise. It's yeah. I, I thought that song needs a needs a, a an introduction of some sort. So. Very nice. Very nice. Simon and Garfunkel. I, I don't know. I've never listened to Simon and Garfunkel properly, properly but it sounds like it. That's fine. The great, 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 great artist for Simon. And All for One, of course. <laughs> uh, all for One, all for one is, is uh, an unbelievable story, you know. It's just, we always decided it would be a good live song. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the, the, the first version we heard of it was uh, Richie Blackmore, and um, I took it to the band and said, "Guys, we must, we got to metalize this man," and um, and it became part of our live sets. And it beca it beca you know, we fell into a trap of of covers where where people were coming to watch us perform covers, man. You know, it, it, <laughs> not to take away from our songwriting, but some of our covers were some of our best songs, and um, and All for One is one of those, you know. So much so that we had to we had to uh, record a whole album just of the of the covers that we've done. Um, we, we, but there we, was we so like, much fun live, you know. It was, oh yeah, of course. Some of these covers were so much fun live. Yes. You got to remember, hey, um, Agro performed over a thousand gigs. You know, uh, more, maybe closer to two thousand. We we were a very very busy band. For <laughs> And um, to to make things entertaining for us, we always used to cover songs that were were, were different, man. You know, like let's hey hey guys, let's 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 throw together something by by uh, by by Abba or uh, or Mia. You know, and, uh, bass. <laughs> we do that. You know, our first and and I have to mention this. Our first. I don't, I don't want to use the word hit because. We never had a hit, but our first introduction to, to, to mainstream radio was a cover version of, of Bill Withers' mm -hmm. Me. And Me. Uh, and we, we did a metal version of it, and we thought we were the most happening band in the world, you know, and it got, it got, it got to number six or seven on, on the modern rock charts in South Africa, and, 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 
it was a cover version, man. And uh, man, it was good times, fantastic, fabulous. Yeah. yeah fantastic stories. Very no idea nice. what this got to do with the original question, though. I'm, I'm losing tr track here, man. <laughs> 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 It's the end, so it's the end of the story. So no worries about losing the track. So we want uh, to thank, uh, as Jim, the, we want to thank Argo for uh, for this interview, taking the time from three timelines from Australia, South Africa, and Ireland, making time and telling us interesting stories from uh, all the years, and also about telling us about the new album and so on. And I want to thank also the viewers who watched, engaged with uh, questions. And for the viewers, we will uh, provide with relevant links. Uh, we have also provided uh, the link to the new album. So check the new album out from Argo if you haven't done already. And if you want to support the band, just uh, follow them on, um, on their page. So we will provide with everything. So any finalizing words uh, for uh, Argo? Do you have anything? Um, I just, uh, it's wonderful yeah, good, good, good. to still be here after all these years and to still being on a relevant platform talking to all of these wonderful people um, is, is something that only the metal community can offer and uh, keep metal alive, man. You know, this is... You know what? We'll probably do this in another 20 years, man. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah, just uh, thanking our families and our friends. And yeah, cheers, man. We love you all. And uh, yeah, we, we'll be doing this until we can't no more. As Robbie said, the, the, the families, they, the, our families have put up with a lot from us. And uh, they've, support, they've supported us all the way. And we... I can't, I can't think my family specifically I can't think my wife enough and my other daughter who, who thinks that he's a rock star every time there is there's a video on TV if she thinks it's daddy but it's not um, it's uh, I can't thank my family enough for supporting me both mentally financially uh Cooking for me and stuff like that, so I can be, so I can rock out. You know, it's it's incredibly important. Can I uh, can I just finish off with one final message? Yeah, absolutely. Please. Do it. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yes, yes. I I just want to say to my brother, my brother Jimmy Crab in South Africa. Um, yeah, is the first fucking do us and a fuck fucking do us. Uh, I will your scoop on your droll fucking pill, your ether pet. I get your lift. Those are all nice, lovely words, by the way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, That's we it. can all say stuff in our languages, I suppose. I would like also yes. to say to so thank uh, Agro, thank Cliff, Robbie, Nick. We had great time. Thank you guys for joining thank us. Thank you very much for having us. We had a great time, great fun time. Thank you. Veronica? Uh, thank you guys very much for joining us, for uh, spending your time, especially Nick, who have to wake up so early. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Welcome. Nick. And the viewers, of course. Thanks, the viewers. Thank you. Thank you. And hope to see you soon. <laughs> Around. Hi. <laughs> Love you guys. Stay heavy. <laughs> <laughs>